Okay, uh, trying to finish this uh, modeling job up a little bit. Um, just kind of making copies of things and changing things. And I just wanted to talk about the head a little bit right now. I made a few copies of it. Um, what I tried on this one was, uh, you can see there's a lot of confusion here um, with uh, just a lot of uh, stray vertices and edges that aren't really attached to anything. So I'm thinking just take this whole panel out and um, you know do that with a texture map. You know that's probably better use of uh, resources and even this thing here. But that's up to the designer and what your needs are. You may need this thing to come out. If you do, then it doesn't probably need every one of these edges because, to, for example, look at this edge here. Let me just um, highlight it. That edge does no good. That edge does no good. These are just wasted edges. So those need to go away and just use the same techniques uh, I showed earlier. In fact, I'll just do these and control backspace and they're gone. If you go to vertex mode, you can see those vertices are gone too. So you can clean those up that way. But if you're going to do that, if this thing's just going to be floating here, you really need to connect this to the rest of the model. Um, so I'll get into edge mode and I would probably Go to cut and just do a cut from here to here and you know kind of work it that way so that everything's connected and you're probably going to need to do that all the way across here but uh, again i would argue for taking out some of that detail so you have a more efficient model to uh, work with less a little bit less painstaking um, detail work and and then you know enjoy what you can do with the textures and make the texture work for most of that. So we can, of course, get rid of all this. Uh, I'll just go to uh, Polygon and make sure that you're in select mode, not in move and select. Otherwise, you can accidentally grab stuff you don't want to get. And also, I'm in crossing mode here. I'll just click this and get into window mode. And then I just grab the stuff that's within the window. So I can get rid of all that stuff pretty fast. Then just get rid of these extra faces and just kind of click on all those and get rid of them. At some point, you end up with an open face and then you can grab uh, one of these units. There's another one on the back side here. I just grabbed that and cleaned it up a little bit and positioned it next to this model. Then I selected this model and did a attach and attach these two. But they're attached, but they're not really welded together. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So, and the better you position them, the better everything's going to go for you. So I'll just grab this vertex, put a target weld, and just weld that there, and that there. And then you got an issue here. You're going to have to come across with some cuts here to clean this up or get rid of these. You have your choice. And then you can see this is a little bit too big. So, you know, if it has to be just like the one in the movie, let me go to my top view. Then then, it, then that's the way it is. If that's what you've decided you're going to do, then that's okay. But just be sure that you really want to go through all that. Now I'm going to scale these down. But first I'm going to check if ignore back facing is on. And it is. So let's turn off Ignore Back Facing. And move it again so everything moves. Because there could be, could be some stuff on the back side that didn't move. And let's just scale it all down and see if that works. I'm not trying to do this thing perfect by the book. I'm just trying to look at some of the broader ideas here. And how we can make this um, model more suitable for rigging. Yeah, yeah, it's I kind of screwed it up a little bit. I think, but I think you get the point of what I'm trying to do here. And I want to point out one thing here. I've got this yellow arc rotate tool. That means I can select on one sub object and rotate about it. See that? Now, if it's on white, it's anything that's a selected object. So I select, let's say this. That's the center of my arc rotate now. See that? And if you don't have anything, which is what most people have, especially beginners, they have it on nothing, you're rotating about just the center of the screen. It's a kind of a painful way to work. 
because you might be working over here and now how do you get how do you rotate around this leg when it's not in the center anymore okay I wanted to show also um, these this neck that was made let's go to uh, let's see how can I do this best let's just make a cylinder I made a few of these just for uh, example increase the height segments I'll just rotate it down to 90 degrees and that's how I made this blue one okay and now with this blue one I can just select it and say hide unselected so we can really focus on this and uh, I'll go to my top view and uh, actually I need to show you what the other ones look like this is what was made before so I just want to show a way to do that in case anybody watching this doesn't know so again um, we'll just right click this convert to editable poly we have the faces and what are we in we're in window so I can window anything or let's go to crossing window it might work better and I'll just grab all this and hold down my control key all this and I'm just grabbing all these and ignore back facing is turned off so I know I'm grabbing the ones on the underside as well and screwed that up didn't I but I use alt and I can clean it up so holding down control lets you grab additional selection sets holding down alt lets you delete selection sets then let's see what I'm doing a little bit so I'll change the view and uh, go to extrude and take it way down and do it by local normal and it looks pretty good there's a little bit of an issue with this end cap here that we probably should have got rid of and if you go by polygon they'll all divide out which you might want for another effect and let's just say that's okay